and welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent converts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon, and I am hosting the show today. Um, we've got something pretty different, pretty exciting. Um, you know, this podcast is all about learning, and today I'm going to learn something. We're all going to learn something. <laughs> um, so I am joined today by actor, comedian, and musician Peter Stoya. Welcome to the show, Peter. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming. Um, so <laughs> when I was uh, last time, I told you guys I've been like reaching out in my circles to see if anybody would want to talk to me about K-pop. And when I got hooked up with Peter, it turns out that like he has an interest in a different kind of Korean music uh, adjacent. Yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> adjacent. Yeah, I am. I mean, just from that part of the world in general, I'm a big fan of punk and metal music from that area. And uh, but specifically with uh, Korean music and bands from over there. I only knew probably like one or two mm -hmm. from like various compilations like right. friends of mine have sent me and stuff. So to kind of delve into it was super fun. Great. And I just learned a bunch of stuff in like the last two days. Perfect. So. But before we, <laughs> so before we jump into finding out about like the Korean punk and mm -hmm. rock scene and all that, I got to keep it on brand and mm -hmm. ask you, what is your experience or as we call it on this show, your K-pop origin story? Like Ooh. how did you become aware of the K-poppy K-pop if you can remember? Oh, geez. Um, I think, I, I think probably mostly in like the last Last like five or so years, I mm -hmm. would say I, I became uh, more and more aware of it. Uh, I slightly before I was like in the comedy scene. Uh, I blogged a lot and I had like a Tumblr and Love Tumblr. on Tumblr is Tum I honestly felt like Tumblr was like the best place to learn about new things. Uh -huh. And so like I think there were a couple posts on there that like really kind of like sparked my interest. And um, I mean, just aside from that, like I feel like I've seen. Just as just from the outside, just like videos here and there at like restaurants or like mm -hmm. random places, and it just seems so like wild and over the top to me. Uh -huh. uh, and then I have a friend, uh, my buddy Frank Halley, uh, who is a director, a YouTube guy, mm -hmm. and he, um, for the longest time, uh, or I mean, still is just very into uh, J pop and K pop and mm -hmm. uh, and all the. The, the pop music and from over there, especially like all girl groups, which okay. there are a ton of. Yes. Uh, and um, I think that I think those two areas were kind of like where I really got uh, uh, notice of it uh -huh. and got interested in it. Do you have any do you have any like K-pop groups that you like like or ones that you can name or like a song you really dig uh, or is it still kind <laughs> of it, I'm I think I'm still pretty new to it uh -huh. but I do I when I messaged you when I emailed you first about this I mentioned how like that day like there was something about how like John Cena and some K-pop group mm -hmm. uh were like communi like communicating yeah, on Twitter John Cena was saying that he wants to be BTS's yeah. bodyguard yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's just, I don't know much beyond that, but uh -huh. it's it like creeps in here and there. Cause I'm just a big fan of like, just like really weird, crazy stuff right. that happens in, in music. Yeah. Uh, and just to hear that, was just, <laughs> it just seems so crazy to uh -huh. me that John Cena would even be aware of it. Right. No. Yeah. BTS is definitely having like an American moment right okay, now. Cool. They've like been on TV a ton. So I feel like. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like that kind of stuff is also a little bit um, de like debatable w within uh -huh. the army. Like some people are like, this is so exciting. Our boys are getting attention. And other people are like, they're hangers on. Like, oh, geez. they're just trying to get clout. Like, because oh, yeah. Tyra Banks was like, I love BTS. And everyone was like, Tyra Banks is fake. Whoa. Like, how dare she? She just wants really? their. Like, yeah, there, but there's like a split from people being like, this is great. And other people being like, how dare you like try to <laughs> like ride the coattails of BTS? It's interesting. very interesting. I did recently see an article about an American K-pop group. Yes. And, uh, and that was like. Crazy to they're, me. That's EXP Expedition is what they're called. And well, I mean, they definitely have the wonderful name uh -huh. thing 
Yeah, so, no, they. Right. But <laughs> it's I. I just don't think it's gonna work. And like, no, Vice definitely did. Not. Vice did like a very sympathetic piece about them, like about how they're like being discriminated against. But I don't think they're being discriminated against for being like white guys trying to do K-pop. I think the problem is that they're all like thirty. And I'm 30, so like, but I, but you don't, you don't yeah. try to be a boy band. Yeah, when yeah, like, yeah. Like that's silly. Unless you were a boy band, right? And like, yeah, then you and can you continue need, to be a boy band in your 30. But you don't debut as like grown ass boy band. It's very odd, and their Korean like sucks. Like their pronunciation is really bad. So it's like, <laughs> I don't it's know what all, anyone expects across the board. Horrible. Yeah. So anyway. Today, oh, wow. we're going to talk about something like totally different from hip hop, <laughs> which I'm excited about because I feel like it's a thing. I did an episode with my husband a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about K pop groups that play instruments, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which like is it's adjacent, but like they are they still operate in the K pop world, like with yeah, sure, the, in on the music shows and like with the same fan culture. And it's like part of this. But people ask me all the time, like, is Korean music just K pop? And it absolutely isn't. Like, mm-hmm. K pop is just like a small subsect, like, they definitely have other music like and adults don't listen to k-pop and there's like uh, and i'm sure cool kids don't listen to k-pop so <laughs> we're gonna talk about like oh those would darn you say, cool kids would you say rock or is this like punk i honestly as a like as a pop fan who's always just been uh-huh. a pop fan i had like a bit i was saying this to my husband on that episode that like i had a tiny moment in middle school, sure. I was like trying to be like with the cool uh-huh. moshy scene kids and like impress uh-huh. skater boys or whatever. But yeah. it, it just was never me, no. and I couldn't really do it. I get it. it. <laughs> I get it. Um, uh, uh, the most of the bands I'll be talking about today are are definitely punk bands. Okay. Um, and don't really delve too far from or however go far from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there. But I will talk a little bit about just like the rock music scene in Korea as well. Perfect. Because I learned a little bit about that too. Love it. And there's definitely kind of like a like a preamble to okay. punk becoming popular in Korea. Perfect. Well, take it away. All right, cool. Whatever you want to. I'm just, I'm here to learn today. All right, cool. So let's go. Great. All right. So, uh, so from what I understood, so rock music became popular in like the 1950s in Korea. That's when it really just started. Right. Um, and there was this guy called... Uh, Oh, okay, and also apologies for all my pronunciation. <laughs> I feel like I probably won't do it well. But there's this guy, Shin Jung Hyun. Yes, we have talked about him okay. on our show before and the ban of guitar music. I didn't go into, like, his jailing and all of that, but, like... Okay, But yeah, that's no, a big part of it I'll all. talk about... <laughs> I'll, I only will mention that as well, but it struck me, too, when I read about it. So, yeah, so he was the godfather of rock music over there. And then when... There was this president, Park Chung-hee, who yes. wanted him to write a song about him. Mm-hmm. And then Shin was like, no. <laughs> and then Park uh, banned his all of his music, yeah. right? And, and like all guitar music, like any guitar music. Just I didn't For know like that. 20 years, none. Okay. Till he was assassinated, that rule stood. And like, wow. yeah, all, men couldn't that, have, it also, men couldn't have long hair. Women had to have like their so skirts like he measured. Had, so it's almost as if like he viewed Shin as being like a god and like yeah, he had he to was just an, be he was an agitator taken I mean, away he, yeah, yeah, yeah. from everything. Oh my God. Yeah. It's just crazy. Uh, uh, but then the other thing was that he also, Park, the president, uh, imprisoned Shin for marijuana. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that that rule still stands. You can really? you still go to jail for weed in Korea. It's well, super I mean, illegal. going to jail. <laughs> I mean, just going to jail. I guess is not bad, but but sure. That's fucking. Sai went. Sai <laughs> also was jailed for weed. Really? Before pre get like way pre Gangnam mm-hmm, Style, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. like that was part of his origin. Okay, as well. that's the other thing I know. Sai, I know Sai. Okay, yeah, I know Sai. Sai's a great person. <laughs> uh, okay, so so that happened. It was banned, and so then it, rock music in general was definitely not popular, but there were a few, mm-hmm. mostly heavy metal bands that were popular. And then there was this one called Sinaway. Uh, okay. Uh, S-I-N-A-W-E. And they were more on, like, that hard rock, heavy metal side. So if you've ever heard, like, a Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin, okay. they were definitely more in that realm. Mm-hmm, that kind of what's, like, classic rock. Classic now, rock, or whatever. man. Yeah. yeah, classic rock. And so... Then it got, it came back, rock music and especially punk music came back, and that was in the early 90s because 
there was democratization. Right. And there is this president who, or the ending of the presidency of Ro Te Wu. Okay. Uh, who, from what I understood, was just a very bad president and also was like kind of leading Korea through like an economic depression. Yes, there was, we taught, we did a whole, because K-pop as we know it was like born in the early 90s. Okay. And so in our episode well, about the first generation of K-pop, we talked about how, I'm sure it didn't, it affected pop music in that it was like bankrupts, it, bankrupting companies, the IMF crisis, the like Asian financial oh, okay, crisis okay. where like a bunch of economies crashed. Yeah. So it affected K-pop in that people couldn't make nice music videos, but I bet it affected punk music and that people had something mm -hmm. to rail against. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And I'll talk about, I'll, I'll mention that a little bit. So there was that, the pres the ending of that guy's presidency, and then um, the United Nations uh -huh. accepted both Korea, North Korea and South Korea in 1991. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was called the Security Council Resolution 702. <laughs> okay. Um, but basically, at that point, there is this w huge wave of m music that e people in Korea had never heard before. Right. And a ton of punk music from the UK and US uh, and other parts of the world were just like, just exploded. Yeah, it yeah. just exploded. And the idea, uh, like, to give an idea of how quickly it was when punk began its influence, so the presidency ended in 1993 and then. One of the bigger bands that formed called Crying Nut mm -hmm. uh, formed in 1993. They didn't release anything until later, but I'll get into that in just yeah. a second. Uh, and so, yeah, so they were exposed. All these Korean kids were being exposed to this music for the very first time. And all these bands were exploding. And they were like, yes, we're going to make let's all just make our own bands, which to me is just awesome. Yeah. Little kids all getting together and making music is amazing. No, um, that's great. Uh, and it was called, and I watched a little bit of a documentary to try to get this pronunciation right. Okay. It sounds like Chosen, which it's not, but it's Chosen? Chosen, punk. yes. Chosun Punk, which is what they called it. Okay. Band, the bands in the punk scene, that's how they referred to it. Because Chosun is the name of a dynasty that okay. lasted for like 600 yeah, yeah, years yeah. in Korea. It's like one of the longest like periods of time. A lot of like historical dramas and stuff take place in the Chosun dynasty. Very, like a, very lovely. Yeah, so it's that it's like inherently Korean is I guess what uh -huh. they're trying to sure, like, by absolutely. using that name. To so yeah, like, so it, they were taking the punk music that they heard from the other parts of the world, but they were still trying to keep true to their roots and to mm -hmm. culture, their own culture in the music, which was awesome. And so that movement, the Chosun movement, mm -hmm. uh, is like credited with birthing the entire independent music scene in Korea. Wonderful. Uh, so um, go into bands, right? Yes, no, yeah, let's, sure. let's do right, it. Cool, all let's right. Let's talk about some So people. I got some bands and I got some MP3s and I actually made a Spotify playlist. Lovely. We'll link it on all the socials so people can listen yeah, to it later. It's called... K-Punk Ska, oi, headbang. <laughs> I thought that was, uh, I just tried to, I tried to name it funny because all the names of these bands are so great. Like every single band, like there's something about, it's not necessarily a mistranslation, but there's just something, it's just the language is different in right. that part of the world. So they put words together that you would never think right. of putting together. Exactly. And that makes it a hundred percent funnier. Um, so the, the, the first band that I want to talk about, uh, they're called No Brain. Okay. Uh, so they formed in 1996. Um, they, 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 and this other band, Crying Nut, who I'll mention next, they were kind of like the two really big punk bands that formed in Korea, like at the very start. Mm -hmm. um, they released, their first thing was they released this uh, compilation called Our Nation 2. Uh, and it was with another band called Weeper, which I'll also play a little bit of. Great. Um, and Our Nation won the first compilation. That was this other band, Crying Nut, which I'll get into. Okay. Um, and I don't have too much other info on No Brain besides that they still perform. And also the members individually also are enjoying careers in acting and hosting. Oh, lovely. Uh, so, all right, cool. I'll go ahead and play. I'll play two just snippets of two songs from them. Uh, and a little weird, I'll get into it. Okay. Okay, so this first song uh, is called Burnt to Ashes. Great. Okay. <laughs> 
And this is from that that compilation, their first thing, their first release. Okay. It's fun. Oh yeah. It's all all this music is so so fun. Uh, so that's Burnt to Ashes and then so then they have this I just wanted to quickly bring this up. They have this song called Stand Up My Friend and the beginning if you're a punk music fan, you'll probably notice it right away, but it sounds very much like the next song I'll play quickly. So that that uh, guitar, the, the, the chord structure in that is very similar to probably the most notable Misfits song ever I've heard, uh, Astro Zombies. It has the exact same chords. Yeah, no, it has that. It feels... I don't know if that's like a, a. They probably did that as like kind of a, 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 a an homage to yeah, yeah, the yeah. Misfits, right? But uh, I just thought, it like, when I first heard, it, I was like, "Disaster Zombies." What's yeah, going on? no, it's like the, it felt. It all felt sounded really familiar. Yeah. I like. I watched some of their videos this morning, and like things that I wrote down, like. One of the songs I played had piano in it, and mm -hmm. I, like, love piano rock, so I was, like, very excited about that. Oh, great. And they were all wearing matching outfits. They were wearing, like, mechanic onesies, Ooh. like, all five of them. And so I was like, <laughs> oh, uniforms, I love it. Uh-huh, great, and they, great, great. Like, the, their sound, I don't know if it was, like, their later music or something, but their sound felt like the closest thing I could it felt Foo Fighters oh, sure. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely an element of that. And then they had a funny music video where, like, they were being played by children and by old men. There were, like, they weren't in the video. <laughs> like counterparts of Yeah, them. there was, like, a band playing for kids, and it was, like, kids. And Another, they were, like, uh, actually, I think in Foo Fighters' last music video, that they performed as old guys in, like, a nursing home. Well, there you go. So, so yeah. And also, I mean, like, the Foo Fighters were also extremely popular in, like, the early 90s uh -huh. when, when all this happened. So, like, of course, I, I think... I think just rock music in general, like all kinds of it, just like flowed to Korea like as soon as that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, I also so that wanna, was no brain. That was no Woo. brain, uh, and I also want to play. So I, they did a, a compilation with this band Weeper, uh, and I want to play a little bit from uh, one of their songs. It's called "Am I Wrong." <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna say all these song titles like forcefully. Seriously, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hopefully, this isn't too loud. Oh, whoops! Accidentally fast forwarded. But I mean, you get the I'm idea. I'm getting the point. Yeah. Very. I would. I would rec like say it's very like the Dead Kennedys for sure. And very just like, I love that yelling at the beginning yeah. of the song, too. It's so, like, in your face. Um, okay, so then the next band I want to talk about, Crying Nut. Mm -hmm. So they're, like, probably probably the biggest punk band, I would say. Uh, so like I was saying before, this guy, Ro Wu, his presidency ended, and then they formed, like, the same year. Okay. Um, and also, they are Korea's best-selling independent artist of all time. Wow. Um, they performed, they just performed in Los Angeles just, uh, a few years ago in 2014. Uh, and so, yeah, they're still touring. They're still making music, which is great. Love it. So, yeah. So they kind of, I think came up, I'm not sure if they came up with the term Chosen Punk, but they were definitely like, like as soon as they formed, they, that was how they described it. They were it. like the, they were yeah. the face of that. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. And so then their first release was Our Nation One, mm -hmm. and that was a split with a band called Yellow Kitchen. <laughs> Love uh, it. And they released music until 2002, and this is a running theme throughout all the bands because they kind of stopped because, at one point, because they all have mandatory military service. Yes. So a lot of these bands were just like, Either all the members or one of the main members had to go to the military, and they didn't make music for a bit. <laughs> yep. It happens to K-pop, too. Yeah. It so oh, so to there you go. It, just that part of the world. <laughs> just a thing. Um, so, yeah, they started. And then they came back in 2006 and have been doing stuff since then. Uh, so I will play this song called, <laughs> Hey, Man, What's Your Problem? Ooh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's so great. <laughs> It kind of has like a little like dancey beat. Mm -hmm. That was something I wrote down about their music is that it felt like more poppy than other things. Sure. Like there's something more like melodic and uh -huh. like fun about it. Yeah, absolutely. And then 
I'll skip ahead a little. It's just like, it's just kind of like, <laughs> kind of like easy punk. Yeah. <laughs> Not in difficulty, but in listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, and the, yeah, so from what I understand, they were like, I mean, well, it's right there. They're the best selling indie artist in Korea of all time. So, I mean, yeah, they are, they are huge, still making music. Uh, and like with No Brain, like those two were kind of like the, the pair yeah. that like led the whole thing. Yeah. Of the videos I watched, they seemed, they just seemed like they had a fun like image, like mm-hmm. a lot of their music videos were like purposefully funny. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so these guys kind of like to play around. Like one of their biggest songs is like a circus okay. song. And like, <laughs> there's a lot of like, you know, clowns and stuff in yeah. it. And another thing that I thought was really interesting is on a lot of the crying nut videos I watched on YouTube, they had a ton of comments in Spanish. Oh, oh okay. So I well, don't know if they had like, a Latin America surge, or if I mean, someone mu- discovered them mu- somewhere. There must but. be. I mean, I think Latin America has always also had like a very strong punk scene, and mm-hmm. um, it's not. Nece- I don't know if it's necessarily like big, but I do know that like the people there are like super loyal to it. Yeah, uh, and so like yeah, I think that anytime new punk music comes out I- anywhere, they just have to like yeah. they have to find it. And get it. And so, yeah, I think a lot of, like, cross-pollination yeah. happens with well, those different Well, we scenes. have a lot of listeners in South America, so if oh, any of y'all sweet. know about this, yeah. hit us up. Yeah, hit us but. up. <laughs> if you are a fan of Crying Nut or yeah. No Brain, let us know. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then the next band uh, is called Rux. Okay, I have to tell you, we've talked about Rux on this show okay. before. Oh, okay, great. Because on our episode where we were talking about live music shows in Korea, the, the, someone, the they showed their peens. Yeah. So they got, people went, people got scolded and they this. got kicked off TV. So we we played. The show got canceled. Our, yes. We, the show was canceled because they were naked for we a We played the clip on the show. Oh it was God. great. So I can't so, believe that. Yeah. It's, but I'm it's not, the I'm most a, punk thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so... And uh, have you seen the clip? There I haven't seen so the clip. There are so many people on the stage. They Because they invited like a bunch of their friends Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's they, just chaos. I don't... And like there was like... Did they know the two people who... Because there were like two people who got naked first, right? Yes. And then they got naked... And so, no, it was just the two guys. I don't know, because I think they, like, cut away. But they cut away to the audience who are just, like, (gasps) it's crazy. But uh, (laughs) I think from what I heard is that, like, they were having trouble identifying who who got naked because mm-hmm. there were so many people involved. So they ended up just taking in the lead singer of Rux to be like, you were responsible for this oh, in yeah, some yeah, way, yeah. right? And then I think his label or someone like def- – it, it all ended up okay. No one like went to jail or got put on any registries. But the show got canceled and it was a really big I can't. Deal. <laughs> Oh, man. Like, nothing like that happens anymore. Yeah. Shows don't get canceled because controversy. Yeah, you that's know? true. If a show just got completely, like, if that happened today, people would, like, that would be huge. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, anyway. But, that's all, <laughs> but that's all I know about Rux. Okay, okay. Is there, is the incident. Okay. But I also watched some of their videos, and my, the only thing I wrote down is that their lead <laughs> singer has a nice voice. Like, he's he, actually, like, a he seems oh, yeah, very sure, nice. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, with Rux, um, in, so in 1994, there's this record label called Drug Records Mm -hmm. and also, also the label names, like, it's just one thing and then records, which I think it's the other, Drug Records, Skunk Records, like, they don't, like, it doesn't go beyond that, which I think is really funny. Uh, but so in 1994, that record label opened a punk venue near this, uh, university called Hongik. Yes. That's uh, that's the cool neighborhood. I've talked okay. about that. I've been there. We've talked about that. Oh no a way. Lot On the Great. show before. Awesome. It's, a, it's like the it's the it's where the, cool the youth spot, hang the out. The cool kids. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so all the young people they took to punk quickly and they formed bands right there and then and then but there weren't any other labels besides this label Drug Records. Okay. And so uh, Rux started their own uh, before they even. I think released, yeah, they formed the record label Skunk Records in 1998, and then they released their first song in 1999. So it was literally, we're going to make this label, and then through that we'll be able to release our music, which is amazing and super cool. Okay. Uh, And then 
mandatory military service, 1999, 2002, no, no, nothing happening. Yeah. Um, and then like, that was the big thing. They were infamous for that undressing mm -hmm. incident in 2005. So that was when I graduated high school, uh, to give you a frame of reference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also the name of the show is music camp, which was yeah. just such a cute yeah. name. Yeah. It's cute. I and believe then, it became Music Core or Music Bank. I don't know. I said it properly. On so like episode. it came back under a new Yeah, it name. like it because because weekly live music shows are so 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 important. They can't oh, yeah. not be on. They just needed to like separate themselves needed, from yeah. the shame they of that to, other show. To do that correctly. <laughs> but yeah, I think and I'm pretty sure after that it became like a strictly K pop K pop show. Because apparently we talked about it on the episode, but the reason that Rux was even on that show is because they like were trying to do fun segments and bring in music people mm -hmm. might not have heard. Yes. So I it was like a segment that. called like is this song any good or something? And it was oh like God. they were brought on as an experiment and they just really, you it was, know. What an experiment <laughs> it was. Oh, man. But so, I also, they yeah, they seem to still be doing it. They're when still I, doing it too, They're yeah. like hot dads now. I was like, I saw one of their like Ooh. pretty recent videos and they were like <laughs> in like tank tops and like tattooed and they're like grown and they like look like somebody's cool dad now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, and that's the great, I think that about all punk music in general is that when the young bands that you listen to when you were in high school or, or college get older, they're punk dads now and now it's cooler to be a punk parent. Yeah. You know, it's great. I don't know if any of them have kids or anything. I was just they saying probably, they like, I feel like, like, like they dads. probably do. <laughs> 10 years after, yeah, you know, it's, it's 10 years time. is a lot of time. Things can happen. Uh, okay. So then I'll get into... I'll quickly list the other bands, but one that I really wanted to mention uh, before the others is probably one of my favorites that I found. They're called The Geeks. Yes. Uh, and they were, as far, they, as far as I know, they were one of Korea's first hardcore punk bands. Okay, so, and what is, like, explain that to me. What so, does that mean? So, so hardcore, so <laughs> if, like, and people would probably disagree with me with this, but I'm just saying, for instance... <laughs> If, like, the Ramones is just, like, what you would call pop, uh, punk rock music. Okay. I almost said pop punk, which they I, they are not. But they might be. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, if you would call the Ramones punk rock, then, like, a band like Black F Flag or the Dead Kennedys would be hardcore punk, which is just faster. They yell the lyrics instead of trying to sing them. Um, it's is very anti-authority it? yeah. and anti-establishment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is it also, like... No judgment, but is it also slightly like anti music? Is that the kind where they're just like, sure, if we're playing bad, there's, that's part of it. There's an element of that, definitely. <laughs> um, but um, the other aspect of the geeks was that they were also the first punk band to bring these two aspects of punk to Korea, which were straight edge and youth crew. So, straight edge is just no drugs, no alcohol, uh, uh, no premarital sex. As far as I know. Okay. I might be wrong. Um, no, I think that sounds right. There were some, like, straight-edge kids yeah, in yeah, high yeah. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and Youth Crew was a movement when it was essentially came from New York hardcore in, like, the 80s when basically a bunch of young kids were creating bands and also there was this huge element of, like, being really optimistic and um, um, just, like, uh, talking about, like, you know, this is my life type of type of yeah to force, be instead of being it. like to take instead of a like everything sucks and like let's all sure thrash it's like hey man things could be cool you're great you're a superstar we all are like yeah, let's yeah. do it like and <laughs> oh man the geeks like it's just like a hearing it you can t oh man it's just like a bunch of little kids yelling and playing yeah no i crazy. watched some of their cute videos of their like their little mo like having their little yeah, mosh, the pit mosh shows pit. or whatever and yeah. they do like they bless crazy. their hearts they look like geeks like they <laughs> all like they all are like kind well, of geeky i imagine that's probably where a lot of how a lot of the kids in korea at this time were too yeah just like little kids who they, yeah, you know they come, seem come from anywhere um but this, so this song is called <laughs> still i say i still i stay the same great do it. Like 
lyrics. Yeah, so basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you hear a song and it's like really fast like this and they're just yelling the lyrics, it's probably a hardcore punk song. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, man. that's very cool, and I like will say that like there, I feel like them being straight edge is like a little. It's like a little more hardcore than being straight edge Absolutely. here because drinking culture in Korea is like not. It's not a joke at all. Like in that part of the world, so I think. much drinking going I've on. I've lost. I mean, like, and, but I always see like, and this is, I don't know if it's the same in Korea, but I always remember seeing like videos of like guys getting like super drunk in Japan, like businessmen and mm-hmm. in Japan, like they like work like seven days a week. Yeah. Right. And so like, they're always working. They barely have any time to do anything else. And so these guys get like blackout drunk and they're like passing out on the sidewalks. Yes. And it's then exactly like that. In okay. Korea. Like, and then the next day they just go back to and work. the drinking culture is like very, it like goes right <laughs> hand in hand with the, like with the, um, cause there's a, a lot of social hierarchy in Korean uh-huh, culture uh-huh. with like age and like, if someone's been working at a job longer than you or whatever. So if you are about to leave your work after being at work for 15 mm-hmm. hours and your boss is like, we're going drinking, you're going. Yeah. yeah. And if your boss pours you a drink, you're drinking. Oh, it. sure. Like there's just no, like g- there's no way around it. So oh, like, yeah. so good for the geeks for standing up. Good for, for the geeks, man. <laughs> we need more geeks out there. I think. Uh, yeah. I thought I liked, <laughs> I wrote down screaming, but clean sound. It is, like, yeah. It's not the same as like, like uh, metal or, or, or like, um, I don't know, any of the Hot Topic bands that yeah, you yeah, might yeah. know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a more chaotic type of screaming. Yeah, I yeah, think. yeah. Um, so just want to quickly go over some other bands. Uh, so there's this band called uh, Lazy Bone. They're mm-hmm. fun. Uh, they're like a, a ska band. Uh, they're... Oh, look at lips. Yeah. God. So, so fun. Uh, and then uh, there's this band, Hollow Jan. Uh, th- these names, these I'm just yeah. I'm pausing because these names are just so great. Um, but they are they were like an emo post hardcore band, so definitely a not quite the scream the same type of like screaming uh-huh. as would be in uh, what the geeks were playing. It's a bit more. Oh yes, this is uh, much more. A bit more angsty, a bit more sad. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this guy's feeling something mm-hmm, for sure. Mm-hmm. That song is called "A Hateful Speech." Uh huh. Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> uh, and so then, uh, okay, this is probably the best n- band name I found. They're called Forty Nine Morphines. Uh, <laughs> and, I love Forty Nine Morphines. And they're a, a, in the same vein of a post-hardcore type band. Yeah, very, yeah, that's very, that's where the mosh pit comes in. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. And then um, I couldn't find, or I didn't, I didn't try to find anything, but I, I did have a tiny bit of trouble. Uh, there's this all lady punk band called Nonstop Body. Oh my God. I love them. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know them? Well, I or like, look, I went them? on YouTube and all, I was upset because all I could find was like three or four songs, but they were from the exact same show and oh, it was great. in terrible quality. So I like couldn't even see how many members <laughs> I, it looked like two girls and a drummer. I think it's, I think it's four members. Okay. Total. I couldn't, I could only see two of them and like, but they had one song where this girl, where the like second lead girl was just screaming, Chuka, which is like, die. She was just like screaming, like, die, die, uh, die. And amazing. then they had this other one that I'm trying to remember the like chorus. I had it stuck in my head all morning, but it was like, oh man, I have to look it up. Okay, yeah, look it up, it. please. Yeah. <laughs> I have it open on my phone. Um, yeah, I, I, so I, I will probably go home and definitely try to look up a little bit more of them. But that also, too, is like all lady punk bands just, I think, from anywhere. Yeah. Like hearing punk coming from that mindset. It's a very different mindset from like bands in America or something. This is Nonstop Body. Yes. Where's the chorus? There was, I gotta find the <laughs> You'll chorus. find it, you'll find it. 
fuck shit up. Oh my Let's God. fuck yeah, shit yeah, yeah. up. Have, I had that yeah, stuck yeah, yeah. in my head all morning. They fuck have a song, shit up. They have a song shit called up. Fuck Shit Up. Yes. It was great. See, and that's the other thing too, because of the not the not the language barrier, but just because it's a different language. When they sing in English, it's wor- like the it sentence structure. <laughs> the sentence structure is just different than it would be yeah. in America. And the I feel like the sentences are just even more like they mean like you yeah. said they mean more <laughs> because of the, you're just saying the words that mean the most in right. the sentence exactly um okay and so then the f- last band that i wanted to play a clip from is called and they're probably my other favorite band shorty cat and they're another Ooh, all lady punk cute band name. um and these guys i mean i would compare it to like just hearing it the first time i heard it i would say it's like uh, like a cheerleading group, but a punk band. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's what I would think. Uh, and this song is called I'm Not Gonna Make It. Okay, this sounds like the Josie and the Pussycats yeah. soundtrack, and I am really into it. Talking about my favorite <laughs> album, one of my favorite albums. Mine too. Time. My husband got it meet for me on vinyl for my birthday. I just bought it on vinyl last it's month. It's so great. <laughs> Uh-oh, I love Shorty Cat. Oh my god It's great It's great And the album cover on this The album is called I Ain't Be Controlled Oh love it uh, And <laughs> the cover is like uh, A girl bunny In a cutesy bunny mask But it's kind of lifted up So it shows her evil cutesy face I see. And she's holding up a fish in an alleyway Perfect I love it. <laughs> I love Shorty Cat. Shorty Cat is the best. All right. So that's that's pretty much all I wanted to wow. talk about. Um, if you would like to experience more, uh, two other things that I think are pretty cool and important, if you would like to learn about specifically Korean punk. In 1997, there was a big compilation called Here We Stand, and that featured Crying Nut and No Brain and a couple of other bands, uh, just like like 10 or so songs of just different punk kinds of punk bands, too, from Korea, which is great. Uh, and then there was this 2001 documentary, which I learned about how to pronounce Chosun punk, <laughs> uh, which is called Our Nation, a, a Korean punk rock community. Wonderful. Uh, and that was, yeah, that was in 2001. Perfect. And it also made me want to get, I, it was available on like library websites. I'm like, oh, I need to get my library. Yes, copy. everyone go to the library. Ugh. Um, and they also allow you to get uh, Criterion Collection movies uh-huh. for free. So uh-huh. I'm going to do that soon. <laughs> um, okay. I have like a, before, like just to wrap it up, I have like a question uh-huh. or two. It's okay if you can't answer it. But I'm just trying to like compare this to the like K- the K-pop world that we normally operate in in this podcast. Like, yeah. Do you know um, if like are the majority of these bands or from what you heard like just – the typical friends from high school made a garage band. Like, are people doing it themselves? Or do any of these labels have the K-pop model of casting people and putting groups together? Or is it, like, organic? That's a great question. I don't, I mean, I don't know specifically, but from all the research that I did, I definitely got the impression that these were bands that, like, a a group of friends got together and were like, hey, guys, we need to make a band now. Yeah. And then it just happened. No, that's great. That's uh, uh, that's what I was hoping for. I don't think, because I don't think, Labels really had a – they were as much in the dark as the public were with, like, rock and punk music yeah. uh, until, like, 1993. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when that wave came, uh, I mean, I don't know – I don't know what the labels I, – I don't know about other types of music really No, that's that true. But I would, I, would imag- I would just imagine that, like, you know – <laughs> if there were if the if there were rock labels operating like K-pop labels, I would probably know about it mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. because they would because like one of the K-pop labels, FNC Entertainment, like only has bands. But like, like I said, they're like poppy bands that like mm-hmm. play on the pop music shows. Um, 
So yeah, no, I was just very, I'm just intrigued because that was something my husband asked me when we did that band episode was like, did any of these kids like form in a garage? And one of them did, but like for the most part, <laughs> that doesn't like happen in the K-pop world. It oh, is sure. like built. By yeah, yeah, yeah. It's put together. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. think, yeah, I think with all these bands, it was literally just, they wanted to get a band together and, and then they did. Yeah. And like with... What I was saying about Rux, they f literally formed their own record label so they could release music. Yeah. No, it's like as, in it's like as independent as you can get, yeah, which exactly. is like the spirit of it all, mm -hmm. and I love it. Yeah. Um, well, this was like really informative and cool. I liked learning about Thank something Thank you. I else. feel like I, I hope I did an no, all right job you for did. learning it in like the last I few days. I appreciate all the research <laughs> that you did. It's wonderful. Um, so we will be right back with our random game. Yay! All right, we're back. And uh, just to explain this game to you, Peter, yes. is we I have a massive spreadsheet of like every <laughs> K-pop group that's come out since the birth of K-pop that has an English Wikipedia page. So there's got to be at least <laughs> there's got to be at least something there to say to about them. Some 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 solid ground there. Something. Um, so <laughs> the group the t this time they picked a boy group. I had never heard of them. They're called Touch. Oh boy. They debuted in 2010. They wow. <laughs> debuted with eight members. They do not have eight members anymore. They are down to five, but only two of the current members are original. So they've like lost. I mean, it many sounds like it, it does sound like any punk band that's <laughs> been notable since like the mid eighties. So. Sure, but this is like, <laughs> but this is not punk. This no, is, yes, of course. They were trying. They were trying to be K-pop. It's really uh, funny though. Uh, there's it, there's almost nothing about them because they. It looks like they put out two small EPs that oh, peaked. Wow. The one peaked at twelve. Um, just it maybe just weren't that popular. But yeah, no, they clearly were. They were not very popular. I've never, never heard of them. Um, not that I'm an arbiter of all things, but like usually I've at least heard <laughs> of people. Um, and apparently, the only other thing I have to say of them is, according to their Wikipedia, "Touch" stands for oh God. the original charismatic, undeniable Alm, which is like French for like. Gentlemen, or so something. So they threw in a French word in there, yeah, too. Yeah, like right there at the end. Um, so, international boys over here. Yeah, so that's like <laughs> all I have to say. And because there's none, that is all I have to say. That's all I have say. to say. But we're going to watch their most popular music video is for a song that's called Walk With Me. And it only has 70 or 700,000 views, which in K pop world is nothing. So, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's see what let's touch get into is all it. about. Okay, so we've got like a girl in a cafe. She's looking sweet. I think the cup that she's coffee. drinking out of has a cat ear on it's it. It's her birthday. Oh, it's her birthday. Oh, but she's sad because I guess no one's celebrating her birthday with her. Oh, Ooh. boys. These guys have heavy makeup on. Okay, so there's only, f so this must be when they're down to five. <laughs> they were inside, they were outside. They're like magic. <laughs> oh, one of them, it's eyebrows are painted blue. And one of them has like eye shadow. And the others don't. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Man, I'm definitely jealous of all of their clothing style for yes. sure. There's I need a, a shop where they shop. There's a really good green jacket on yeah. one of them that's pretty great. They kind of have like this shorts slash sport jacket thing going on. Uh huh. Oh, this guy? Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> His, his eyeshadow is so. It's the exact it's, shame, same it's shade as, as his weird blue as top. his jacket. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he get one of them gave the girl a sketch pad of like some creepy, not good wow. drawings of her. I guess. But she's shocked. She is like, whoa. Oh, oh, she likes it. She they're likes from it his, a lot. They're from his deviant art page. <laughs> This style is like absolutely. I can't get over the, how these guys are dressed and how they like made up and stuff. Oh, his Rolling Stones sweatpants. Yeah, Those yeah. are crazy. And like one of them has like a little doll attached to the sleeve of his jacket. That's just like moving around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many cups of coffee can you order, lady? I know. Well, it's her birthday and oh, no it's one's birthday. paying attention to her. It's she her has birthday. to sit and drink coffee all no, day. No, you made a valid point. I apologize. <laughs> Oh, see, oh, he had to leave her a note. He left her a note on a little leaf-shaped note. 
now the colors have changed. They're in like a, a color coordinated outfit yes, now. Yes, like kind of a peachy coral color. Mm-hmm. Oh, someone left her little balloon animals. animals. <laughs> I haven't mentioned it yet, but they're all amazing dancers, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, from my standards, this choreo sucks. Oh, like, really? Well, I mean, they're, uh, they're not bad. This is an outsider's bad. perspective. No, and so I <laughs> like it. I like your positivity. Because I'm thinking, like, because I think this is the pro- like this is the the real rub of K-pop is like compared to some of our American pop stars, mm. these these guys are killing it. Sure, but sure, sure. But compared to other K-pop artists, this isn't enough. No, you're which right. is why they probably it. aren't pro- very popular. They're not around anymore. It's no, they they have not disbanded. They are still a group. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's something. But they have not put out music in four years. <laughs> so. I also liked just a second ago in the video, there was like cuts between the two different dance sections and it's the same dance moves in both places. So right. like it looks, it's a That's cool fun. editing I trend. love, I love that kind of, okay. So they've thrown the girl a birthday party. She's all blowing out the hat and birthday kick. Yeah. Hit that high note, baby. Oh yeah. There's only one guy, but like, it's the same guy because his shirt is it's one of those really long shirts that go down to your knees okay one only one of the guys is wearing the long shirt which I also think is really funny I don't oh, yeah, know it is they, a really long shirt yeah <laughs> it was a long music video too all right oh man that was beautiful. Wow. That was great. That was a great video. Yeah, I enjoyed I, that. I, I honestly, most of the time when we get these like never heard of them groups, I end up just coming away from it like a little sad because like, hey, they were working <laughs> hard. Like, I feel bad for Touch. Like, why aren't <laughs> why aren't they more popular? Poor Touch. Oh, man. I honestly, I think just from this one music video, I think maybe their downfall was the fact that they were just trying to be too good looking. Possibly. There's definitely that feeling when you're watching the video like oh shit these guys are just so good looking <laughs> that's, what, that's what like people were probably distracted going. by it they couldn't listen to the music it's possible oh wow well that was touch um <laughs> so this is the part of the podcast i forgot to tell you about this but i bet you'll have something okay this is where i recommend something to our listeners oh, that great. i think they should listen to or look at this week so my recommendation this week is actually like it's not a new song sometimes i recommend new songs the song is not new but it feels new to me um it's like it's hot and crappy outside and i'm feeling like not motivated to do anything <laughs> but wanna one song energetic has just really been doing it for me lately uh it was okay. written it was written by hui from pentagon and triple h um and performed by wanna one it has a wonderful dance where they the boys make a piano out of themselves and like one Whoa. of them plays their fingers it's really cool um, and yeah, it just like gets you that sounds super like hyped. Some, that sounds like some Jabberwockies type stuff. Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> so that's my recommendation is one right. one energetic. What do you have, Peter? Okay. Uh, so the, can this can be what anything, so anything at all? TV show, oh, episode, music, video, oh, song, okay. whatever well, you want my oh, listeners man. to like experience. So, is there anything you found in research that you feel like oh, people geez. should see or? Um, well, I think uh, honestly, like of all the bands I mentioned, I think. Uh, Shorty Cat and the Geeks were my two favorites okay. for sure. So definitely check them out. And Shorty Cat took me a very long time to find out where to to try to get yeah. their music, but I found uh, I was able to torrent it. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, but as for the Geeks and a bunch of the other bands, it's all on Spotify. Very easy to check out. And um, as far as like just anything in general, I've. Uh, Ooh, uh, I, it's everybody's talking about it right now. Uh, the show Dark Tourist on Netflix. Okay. Yeah. So this really nice and polite man from New Zealand, uh, this journalist goes around the world, uh, and this is a thing: dark tourism, where people go to destinations that are infamous, that are known for death, uh, destruction, or just crazy stuff that happens. And Eek. so, in the first episode, he goes to the Pablo Escobar district of Colombia, the part of the. Town, yeah, yeah, yeah. The town that is named for Pablo Escobar and interviews people, talks to the man who used to be his number one hitman and best friend. Oh, wow. And that's just the first part of the episode. Wow. Uh, so, like, yeah, it's I've fallen in love with the show. And 
hearing it's nice to hear like a polite host be like, oh, this is this is crazy. And that's not a very good New Zealand accent, but, but like just hearing him be like, oh, you wouldn't. Oh, this is a, a weird thing, isn't it? It's yeah. like talking to people just like the most calm, nice guy. Uh, and it's uh, I think a bit it's both. It nourishes the craziness of the world that's going on right now, mm -hmm. but also is kind of like told from a nice perspective that is kind of refreshing. There you go. A totally non-K-pop recommendation for good TV on Netflix. Love it. Um, all right. So that's it for this week. Uh, Peter, is there anywhere that our listeners can find you if you would wish to be found? Yes. I A couple of places. Uh, so on uh, Instagram and on Twitter, Peter underscore awesome. Great. Is my uh, good handle. handle. Thank you very much. And <laughs> uh, the uh, elsewhere, uh, I'm on a punk themed improv team called Scene Kids, and we have a monthly show over at the Pack Theater here in Hollywood called Punk House Party. It's themed differently every month. We don't have a theme for August yet, uh, and which we'll have to hurry because it's the second Saturday of every month. All right. Um, and I'm also the bass player in a band called Drac. And the Swamp Rats, uh, Drac like Dracula. And so it's a band of monsters, Dracula, Wolfman, the Mummy, Igor, and Frankenstein. And uh, they've uh, been around for 100 years, and they write songs about blood and killing people and partying hard. That's pretty much all they do. All right. That's <laughs> wonderful. Well, thank you again for joining us, Peter. And if you want to find us on the internet, AMAK Pop Pod um, on Twitter and Instagram, amakpoppod.tumblr.com for our weekly links. And if you want to send us an email, amakpoppod at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, I think the next time that we will talk to you, I, I think... We'll see, but I think I might need to take a break next week for KCON. Um, but we oh, will be back with man. our KCON Spectacular <laughs> episode. Uh, so look forward to that, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Chongyun, you're our inspiration. Bye.